In this video, I want to show you just how valuable point-to-point -point triangles are, how many different designs you can get out of them. And I probably will not cover every combination, but it should at least get you started thinking. The design I'm going to use is one that I digitized myself and it's available for free. Um, I will post the link for that. So we're gonna start with design sew quilt. Start new. And yes, I'm going to and, and I'm going to erase that and reset. And then I need, I'm going to be doing a block pattern. So I'm gonna click on that and enter a rectangle manually. I'm gonna just leave it at the default 10 by 10 and say continue and finished. And now I need to add a design. I have mine in my folder and I know that it's sunflower and yours will have a different name because I renamed it, but there it is, my sunflower corner. I think it's now sunflower try P2P continue and I can either use my rotation button to get it going where I want or I can use stretch I'm going to just use the rotation click and I'm gonna set it for 45 for now I could do 90 and and bounce around but I'm going one two and three and then I'm I'm going to just move it off of my block or because I don't need it anymore. Zoom out. Actually, move, whoops, undo. Got to click the move first. It can't read your mind. Actually, I think I'm going to just go ahead and delete that block. Finished, added a block, delete block, because the only reason I needed a block on my screen was to be able to bring a pattern in. And this is the only pattern I'm going to be using. I'm just going to be combining it in different ways. So I'm going to click my block to delete it. And yes. Now I want to point out that this point to point triangle is actually asymmetrical, which means I can get more design combinations with an asymmetrical triangle than I could have with a symmetrical one. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make it into a bigger triangle. So I'm going to say add edit pattern, copy pattern, I'm going to select that pattern and say continue. Now I have choices here. I can either rotate or I can flip. And because this is an asymmetrical pattern, I will get two different results. I'm going to start by just rotating and because I have it set on 45, I'm going to have to click it twice move. I'm going to click onto one of my nodes and drag it so that it clicks together. Now I could combine at this point. I'm not going to because I'm going to keep using these. Okay, I'm going to say finished. So that is one combination that makes a little bit bigger triangle. I'm going to copy the pattern. I'm going to just select that one and I'm going to move it down below here. Let me just pan so we can see both. Okay, last time I rotated, I'm going to say finished, copy the pattern, I'm going to copy the, just one triangle and continue. And this time I'm going to click on flip X. I'm going to grab that node and drag it over so that it snaps in on the one from the other pattern. Now I can see right now that my, my endpoints are together. So when I go to combine that, I'm not going to want it because I'm thinking about it right now, I'm going to click start and end. And now I have a start point here and an end point here and say finished. Now what I want to point out, and let me just do these so they're exactly on top of each other. I'm going to slide this over here and finished. What I want to point out is the one that I rotated, you'll see that the leaves are nesting together. The rotating is going to give me a pinwheel effect. The one that I flipped is actually a mirror image, so it's going to give me a kaleidoscope effect. So I have these two. There's no reason I need to go back out. I can keep playing with these. I'll, I will worry about showing you combining later. I'm going to copy patterns. I'm going to copy two of them this time and continue. And I'm going to zoom out so I can move them out of the way. I'll move it over, pan, and over.
over. And while I have it here, I'm going to rotate it so that one of my short edges is the base. So I'm going to say rotate one, two, three, if I have it set on 45. And now I have my, my triangle sitting upright. I'm going to say finished. And now I'm going to copy those two patterns and continue. And I'm going to rotate again because this one I'm doing the pinwheel effect. So one, two, and move and have it snap in. Okay. So you can see all of my leaves are nesting there. I'm going to say finished. And then I'm going to pan back over to this one. And I'm going to copy these two patterns. Continue, and I'm going to rotate it. So again, one of the short edges is a base. I'm going to move it over here. Pan. Finished. I'm going to copy those two patterns. Continue. And this time I'm going to flip X again. I'm going to click on one of the nodes and drag it over so it snaps together. At this point, I could be clicking on top or bottom, and I haven't been worrying about changing my start and end points. I would do that when I go to combine. So there's a bigger triangle. I mean, you could keep going as big as you wanted this triangle to be. Eventually, it gets a little bit cumbersome, but because this is in sections, you would still be able to stitch it out even if it was a really big triangle. So we've done some triangles, so now let's play with some squares. I'm going to zoom over. I'm going to just copy one of my sections, just my individual point to point. I'm going to bring it over. And just so it looks the same as the handout I made, I'm going to rotate this. Okay. Let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to copy this pattern, continue, and now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and move it. And again, I want to click on one of the nodes and snap it in. If you're worried about it, you can try stretching, but I know, I know that they are actually snapping together just fine. So that's a square made with just two units. Let's make another one because this is asymmetrical so we can get a different look. Let's just copy this one again, continue, move it over, finished, and copy it again, continue. Now we rotated the last time so this time we need to flip to get a mirror image. We only need to flip once so choose either the X or the Y, it doesn't make any difference, and flip it. And then I'm going to move, I'm going to snap it in there in the node and pan. Now I could sit here and try to, and do all the rotating, but I'm going to just stretch it. Zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to say stretch. I want to anchor at this point. I'm going to click this one and snap it into place. Now, you'll see again, we have a slightly different design here on this one my leaves are nesting and on this one they're kind of budding up together. So let's do this again. Finished. I just want to copy one of my individual sections. Continue. And this time I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. And I could do it from right here but I just want it up and down, so it's visually for me this is easier. Zoom off, move. Okay, finished. I'm going to copy this pattern. I could have done it with my double triangles too. But I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and move. I'm going to click on one of the nodes and drag it to snap in with the other one. Finished. I'm going to copy both of those, continue, and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees twice and move it on the nodes and snap together. 
Now again, because this is an asymmetrical pattern, I can get another block that's made with four triangles that is slightly different. Say so finished, I'm going to say copy. Just copy one of these and drag it over and zoom so we are on a clean slate. Okay, so last time I did rotating, so this time I'm going to do flipping. Copy pattern, continue. I'm going to flip Y. I'm going to move it, and I'm going to move it here. Actually, now that I've flipped it, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. And let's just compare this so far. Yep. Let's see if copy this one, this one continue if I can just rotate it now. Sometimes you've got to play with them to see what you're going to get. Move. So on this one they're all nesting. And on this one they are not nesting. What they're doing is they're bumping up together. You see these two are a mirror image of each other and these two are a mirror image of each other. So there's another square that is slightly different from the previous one. So let's make even more complicated squares. Because I have my triangles up here that I made, I'm going to use those rather than building it up from individual patterns. So I'm going to use my triangles that are made of four individual patterns. So I'm going to say copy pattern. And because I haven't combined them, I'm going to click on all four individual patterns. I'm going to move it over. And say finished. And then I need to copy that again. Continue. And I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees twice and move. It just needs to be one of your nodes so you can click it to the other one. And I, I could leave it like this on point. I'm going to say continue. I'm going to just turn it so it's a square instead of a diamond. It doesn't make any difference, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to move it up here. Okay, so that's the one that's all just rotations and finished. And then I'm going to copy my large triangle that was mirror images. Continue, move it over. Zoom in. Pan. And I'm going to say finished. Copy it again. And this time I'm just going to say flip Y and I want to move. I'm going to click on one of the nodes so that it will snap in with the other ones. Again, I'm going to select the whole thing and just rotate it so that it's sitting as a square. And I'm going to move it up here by this one. Not out. I want to. I mean, not in. I want to go out, so that you can see the difference. So, again, I'm finished. This one, you can see that they're rotating, and this one, you can see that they're mirroring, mirroring, mirroring themselves. So here's a mirror, here's a mirror, and on around. So that's more of a kaleidoscope effect rather than the windmill effect. So if you notice, these two squares that we just did, they have leaves on the outside corners. So we can actually do squares with the flowers on the outside corners too. So I'm going to pan over and I'm going to use my squares that I made from two units. 
So I'm going to say copy, copy this one and this one, and continue. And zoom. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now, because I want the leaves on the outside corner, I'm going to rotate those. And finished. And I need to copy that again. Continue. And I'm going to rotate this one and move it. So if I click on the node and drag it over, I can snap it into another node. Finish. Now I'm going to copy all four of those. This one, this one, this one, this one. Continue and rotate again and move and finished. So there's a different square. Let's copy the other one. So this one was the one that was more like a pinwheel. Let's copy the one that was a mirror image. So zoom, pan, copy pattern, this one and this one, continue. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the reason I didn't combine is because I can keep using my units and then I can decide how they're going to sew out later rather than rebuilding them or having to split them or having them stitch out in a way I don't want them to. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees so I have my leaf up there. Finished. Copy. Continue. I'm going to flip Y this time and move. Nope, I did not want to flip Y so let's either undo or flip Y again. I'm going to rotate did want to flip Y. No. Okay. There we go. I'm trying to get the mirror image here, so let's see if I can get it right the next time. Finished. Copy. Continue. Let's try rotating since it's already a mirror image. Move. That worked. So, and finished. So let me pan so you can see both. You can see the leaves are nesting on this one, and on this one I'm getting my mirror image. So that gives me four different squares out of that unit that have eight of my one point to point. Okay. So we can now make it 16, and rather than having to build it all up from 16 units, let's use four of our four-point part blocks, so these guys. And I'm going to say copy this, 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 oops, this, and this, and continue. Let's zoom out and move this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. All right, finished. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little better. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Finished. Now I could copy again. I could also repeat. Let's see what happens if we say repeat. Add pattern, repeat pattern. Continue. And let's repeat it once. And let's repeat it down once. And finished. Now what I want to know is, did it all snap together? And I could check that if I wanted to. Looks like it did. I'm gonna say good for now, but if you're finding when you go to combine it that they're not. So that was a little bit faster than doing the copy and combine. But you could have done the same thing. You could have copied and rotated. So let's try the other one. Let's see, this one. Copy patterns, this one, this one, this one, and this one, continue. And we're going to move, so I'll zoom out so we can get it up next to the one that it's going to be similar to. And drag.
drag it and zoom in. Okay, let's try repeating this again. Finished repeat patterns. Continue. And I want my repeats one again. But that's nesting, so that is not what I want to do. Let's go flip Y. Whoops, nope, we don't want to do that. Let's go back. We're going to have to copy this one. Copy patterns, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Continue. I'm going to flip X and move it. And you can see that I'm getting my mirror image here and here. Finished. Copy patterns. I want all eight of them. And I know this is starting to get a little bit more complicated. Let's flip Y, move it, and snap it together and say finished. Then let's zoom out just a little bit, see if we can see these side by side. I know that it's tiny but I think you can see that I'm getting my mirror image here and my pinwheel here so there's my squares let's play with making some frames now you could certainly do this with a path pattern I'm not going to today if you are interested in path pattern for this, then I would suggest you go watch some of Tanya's videos or Tracy's videos. Okay, I'm going to start by add pattern, copy pattern. I'm just going to get one of these guys. So this is going to be my simple frame. Zoom in. Finished. I'm going to copy that pattern, continue, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to move. I'm going to click on one of the nodes and snap it together. Finished. And then I'm going to copy both of those patterns, continue, rotate 90 degrees twice, move, click on one of the nodes, and drag it over. So there's one frame. So now let's do one that's a mirror image. Finished copy pattern. Let's take this one and move it over here. Finished. Let's copy the pattern again. Continue, flip X and move and snap it into place. Finished copy pattern. And I'm going to continue. This time I'm going to flip Y and move and snap it into place and say finish. So I have two different frames there. This one, they're kind of alternating which way the leaves are going. This way they're meeting. So we get a slightly different shape in the middle, very slightly. Now we can do the exact same thing with the other triangles we made. So let's zoom out. We just get more complicated as we go. Copy pattern, this one and this one, continue. And I'm going to move it, let's just move it up. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. Finished. I'm going to copy the pattern. And this one is my, my pinwheel one. So I'm going to rotate, move, snap it into place. Finished. And I'm going to copy that whole half, continue, rotate, I'm going to do 90 degrees twice and move and snap it into place. Finished. Okay, so let's go back to the one that was a mirror image. Copy pattern. So this one, that one, continue. I want to get it up by the other frame just so we can compare. And I'm going to rotate it 
45 degrees and zoom in and move it finished I'm going to copy this one flip Y well Y or X either one would have worked and move it and copy so a good time to do this if you have a single one is if you're sitting on the couch just listening to the TV or if you have to go watch ball games or something I don't know that I wanted to rotate let's see Move. oh yeah that's right because you can sit down and make whole sets from just one point-to-point -point triangle Finish. So, we're starting to get. So, there's my slightly different frames. I can do the same thing with my triangles that were three parts, but in the interest of keeping this shorter, I think you see how to make it. So, not three parts, four parts. My four part triangles could also make, make frames. I can use these in. A path pattern so let's I'm finished add block add block standard block and a rectangle continue and I'm going to move this out of the way I'm not going to spend much time on path patterns but just to show you it's easy to get different shapes zoom out I want to move my block so it's not sitting on top of these finished finished add pattern add pattern block pattern use the current block I'm going to go up to my geometric catalog and I want the hexagon you could do this on a circle too continue finished no I don't add pattern path pattern I'm going to use the hexagon continue and then I'm going to choose this point to point pattern this one continue and I just let's zoom in on this I'm going to say six repeats so I just get one on each side and you can play with warp on or off to see what you like better. So there it is off. Here it is on. Um, this would be fit in maybe on points on a star. Probably not, but let's flip Y and bring it inside. Now I'm going to turn my warp off and zoom in. Nope, zoom in and finished no I don't and now I have a pattern that could be kind of a fun frame for something else but it's a hexagon so you can use this on any shape um, we can use it on borders let me just move this out of the way um, you can Obviously, you can use this as a line pattern. Continue. But because I don't have this hooked up to a machine, let's just do it with a line add pattern. A block pat. No, let's not do it this way. Just to show you what it would look like add pattern, block pattern. Use current block. Let's just pull in the sunflower again. This one continue. Let's go out a little bit. Move it. I just want it out of the way. I just want to show you how it look as a line pattern. Finished. No. Repeat patterns. Continue. And let's just pan. I could make it this way anyway and then drag it in and resize to fit my border if I wanted to so there's
just a simple border. And what if we repeated it the other way? Um, why repeats? Let's go one. Don't like, oh, we can flip it. So there's one way. Finished. Pan. Let's copy those. Continue. I'll move it up here. And let's select this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Continue. We could move it up and have them like this, where we're framing something else, or we could move them where they're alternating. Let's go here. That's really too close there, but I at least know they're lined up now. And now I could use move on my screen. I move it till I was happy with it. So there's another one. And we could do this with the squares or the triangles. You could use the bigger triangles. Another thing you could do is combine them to make a really intricate pattern. So let's take one of the four part ones. Let's go finished, copy. And I'm going to continue it, bring it down here. And let's just grab one of the frames. Just copy. Continue and drag it down as well. And let's do this. And let's see. Finished. Let's modify. So the sky's the limit. It's always worth just playing and seeing what you can come up with. Let's rotate this 45 and a move. Okay, finished. And just so I can show you how to combine, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to say combine. And I'm going to do this one, continue, this one, continue, this one, continue, and this one, continue, and finished. You need to decide how you want it to stitch out. So maybe you couldn't fit the whole thing on your, your quilt at one time, so maybe you only do half of it. I'm going to combine. Now, none of these are flipped. Remember, you have the option of swapping start and end points if you need to. You will usually get that pink line as a jump stitch if it's going to be there. You will also, if your points aren't matching up, you'll get a message asking how you want them to connect. If they're really close to each other, it won't ask you that. Finished. Modify this one. I'm going to snap it right there in the center and finished. I'm going to add a block, add block, standard block. I'm going to create a pattern contour. I want to create it around that one. Continue and I'm going to create, do it on the outside edge. Let me zoom in so you can see what's happening. And I'm going to actually put a gap in there just a little bit. Finished, add block, add block, standard block, create a pattern contour. Now I want to do it on this one. And this time I'm going to do it inside the block and finished. And now I'm going to put some rays in here and I already have them made. So I'm going to just say add pattern. Uh, Pattern, block pattern, whoops, that's all right, that's fine. Select block, I'm going to select this one, continue, and oh, 
let's just use this one. Continue. I'm going to make it bigger. So let's stretch it. Nope, let's move it first. Move it out there. I'm going to stretch it from here to here. Move it. Okay, finished. No, I don't. And I would be double checking this um, the pattern to make sure it was going to work. Add block, add block, clipping block. Oh, and I didn't make it big enough, but I think you'll get the idea. That's the pattern I want to clip. I'm going to select an existing block and choose this one. Continue. Finished. Yes, I'm good with that. Continue. Accept. Yes. And then add block, no sew zone. I'm going to choose this one again, select an existing block, and choose that contour, continue, finished. Yes, I'm good with that, and zoom in. So now, even though I didn't make this big enough to come all the way down in here, I have a much more complicated block <clears throat> that's still using the same theme and that is pulled together with, you could just use rays, your uh, curved cross-hatching, whatever. So again, take your tablet, sit down on the couch and play and see how many things you can make out of just one point to point triangle. If I zoom out here, you can see all of these I have and there are many more that I could do. I have a whole set from just one point to point triangle. Just a real quick reminder, after you have combined your patterns, how you want them to be, you can save these so you don't have to create them every time. So I'm going to say save quilt slash pattern. I'm on the design sew quilt page. Click on that. I'm going to save a pattern from the quilt and it doesn't matter how many are on my screen. I'm going to choose this one, continue. You need to give it a name. So I'm gonna just call this one a double triangle and enter and then you need to tell it where you want it to go so if you have a triangle folder you could put it in there I'm just going to put it there select and there it went so I would go through all of my designs and do that so that I didn't have to rebuild them